As we all know in business, we have to make the most of the little victories. One of those sweet moments came to Microsoft Ireland when thanks to a 32% uh, increase in turnover and revenue of close to 20 billion in 2014, the company became the top performer in the Irish economy. Microsoft's Ireland MD, Katrina Hallahan, has been supportive of WXN from the very beginning. She has been a two-time Top 25 award winner and will be recognised later this evening as a WXN Hall of Fame inductee. For Katrina, coming this far didn't just happen by accident. So this evening she's here to tell us of her journey from accounts clerk to MD, explaining all the hard work, planning, team support and mentorship involved in getting her to where she is today. So please join me in welcoming to the stage Katrina Hallahan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I want to start by first thanking Pamela and the team from WXN. Uh, we've been part of the journey with you, Pamela, for the last number of years, but I have to say tonight really surpasses everything that you've done so far. So congratulations. I also want to thank the, or congratulate the 25 women being recognised tonight. It really, truly is an honour to be sharing the stage with all of you. I was a little frightened when I was asked to come and speak uh, as one of the keynotes tonight, especially um, after Philomena shared her story, because I don't know if there was a dry eye in the house uh, hearing uh, how courageous she's been. Um, and how committed she's been to helping others, which I think is wonderful. So congratulations to you. So I've been asked to speak at lots of different occasions over the last number of years. Um, and normally it is to talk about leadership or to talk about diversity or work-life balance or one of the, the, I'm sure, topics you discussed earlier on today. But this evening I've been asked to share my personal story and the journey that I've taken. Um, so that's a little bit scarier and I'm just glad that you've all had plenty of wine, dinner, <laughs> and now I can ease myself into to telling you a little bit more about me. So to get to know a little bit about my journey, I thought the best thing to do was to start at the very beginning and, and share with you a little bit about who I am and my background. So I am a Dublin girl, born in Stillorgan born to a working class family. My dad was a motor mechanic, my mother was a housewife, and I had two older bro brothers. And I have to say, my foundational years, I can remember as being very happy, very loved, um, and, and very joyous family. Um, and family was very, very important. But by the age of 10, we, I had experienced three significant losses in my life within a year. Uh, my grandfather, my baby sister, and my father. So at 10 years of age, the shaping of who I was really started to, to take a significant effect. And the role model that I had then and, and had for all of my life was my mother. And um, so she had, and can, I'll tell you a little bit about w why that was. So I'll start with uh, sharing about who my family are. I had two older brothers, and I'm sure most of you won the creative the artist, the painter, um, and in fact today he is an animator and teaches animation in Ballyfermot College, so he stayed true to his artistic side, uh, and one the sporty person, uh, a very talented soccer player, now a very talented business person. And my dad, in our early days, was the manager of his soccer team. So Sundays, which I'm sure lots of you experience in your families today, is about loading football jerseys, footballs, and the family into the car to go off to the match, which was the most important time of the week. And normally, myself and my mother were in tow. My eldest brother thought watching 22 boys run around after a ball of wind was totally and utterly useless, um, so he never came along. But so life was great, and we really ha were having fun. But on the 14th of November, 1975, on one of these Sunday mornings where we were packing up the car, um, my dad had two journeys to do. One with myself, my mum, and a few of the, the team, um, and the second with my brother and a group of the team. And he arrived up at the football pitch. 
got out of the car. I went off to play in my, with my friends. Uh, he handed out the jerseys to all the players and he stood at the car writing down the names for the referee. Uh, and he collapsed on the spot. Um, my mum and a friend took him in a car to the, the hospital. By the time he got there, he was dead. So our, our lives changed significantly at that moment. Uh, he was 42 years of age and my mum was 40 with three children, 13, 11 and 10. Now the reason I tell you that story is because my mother was left then with a, a, a very serious life ahead of her, how to cope. But interestingly enough, she didn't have an education. So when she was very young, her mum got seriously ill with cancer and she was asked, uh, or she, she decided to give up school at 13 and to go home and rear her younger brothers and sisters. She came from a family of 15, by the way, um, old Ireland. Um, so she didn't know how to read and write. She didn't have any qualifications or skills. And she was left with, well, what am I going to do? But she was a very strong woman and she, had, she did have skills. She was a house worker. She was a mother uh, and she knew how to, to clean. So she was an entrepreneur, but she didn't know it because what she did was she set up a cleaning business with her best friend and they went out and started working in schools, cleaning schools. One of the most embarrassing in one of those schools was mine, but we got over that. Um, but she showed us that through determination, uh, through commitment for your family, that you can get, you can get through anything. And in those formative years, they shaped my values of what's, what has stayed with me for all of my career with Microsoft. Uh, values like family. It's not just my own family, but it's the family I have in work. They're an extended part of my family. I spend most of my days with them. They're sitting over there. Uh, uh, respect. Respect for everybody and every job that, that a person can do. So whether you're the taxi driver, whether you're the cleaner, whether you're the receptionist, whether you're the CEO of a company, whether you're a politician, it doesn't matter. We should respect everybody and have value for everybody. Authenticity was another thing. My mother didn't ever try to be somebody that she, she wasn't. She wa what she saw is what you got. And for me, that's been something that's been really, really important to me as I've gone through my career and got advice from different people about why aren't you more aggressive or why aren't you, do you drive harder, is to really be who I am and respect uh, what everybody else wants to be as well. So being true to your values is really, really important to me. So they are my core values and why I was shaped to being the person I am at the very early stages. And I shared the story just to, to give you a sense of uh, that role model. I'll share one other story because tonight for me the award is as much for me as it is for my mum. Unfortunately she passed away three years ago and one of the stories I'll share with you was during the we waked her at home which is a very unusual thing to do in Dublin because it's mostly a country thing to do um, but I overheard her grandchildren sitting talking about different memories that they had of her during her life. Uh, during their young lives. And one of the stories that she shared was, um, they said they, they remember Nana's little man. Now, my mother never remarried, so this was very curious to me <laughs> about who this little man was. Sorry. So I picked up my ears and decided to listen. Um, and the story I heard was that Nana, there was a little old man who used to sleep rough down in the overflow car park in Stillorgan. And he had, was black from head to toe because of the soot from the fire that he lit every night to try and keep himself warm. And my mother had gone to mass one morning, because she used to go to mass every day, she was a devout Catholic, um, and this man was sitting beside her in the church. Whether he went to church every day because he was a Catholic or whether he went to church to get in out of the cold, we still don't know, but he was sitting beside her. And it came to the sign of the peace and she went to shake hands with him. And he shied away because he was dirty. And my mum totally ignored it, grabbed his hand, gave it a good hard, hard shake uh, and gave him the sign of peace. Later that day, her grandchildren saw her walking down the street with a bag full of clothes and a cup of coffee. 
and down to visit the old man, give him some warm jumpers clothes. My brothers didn't notice they were missing. <laughs> Uh, uh, and a cup of coffee. And the cup of coffee became a regular okay, occasion every Sunday or every day that she went to Mass. She used to always go in and buy him a cup of coffee uh, afterwards. And the lessons that that learned, a uh, thought to me, my brothers, my family and the children, which we felt very proud of, was, again, those lessons of values of respect. And the key one that has, again, stuck with me all of my life is, you know, do as I do, not as I say. She, she never told the children, you need to respect everybody, you need to value everybody, but she showed them how to do that. So for me tonight is, is, is recognizing her as well as me, because that's who, uh, who I am, and it came from that. So that's the, the grounding of who I am. Um, if I fast forward then into my career with Microsoft, um, I left school af straight after school, um, I didn't go to college. I never had a desire to go to college. I actually started working very early. I ran the food lunch shop in work. Um, I went and worked in news agents at 16. But my main aim when I left school was to go and get a job, earn money, bring it back into the house, and let my mom get the chance to not to work so hard. So I got a job with a fast food equipment company. My first a uh, desk was in a bedroom in their house, small family-run firm in Blackrock. And they eventually uh, branched out and opened their own restaurant. So my job was accounts clerk, so I so set up their accounting system. Um, I delivered spices to Superquin um, on a Saturday. I picked up their kids from school. I basically did every job there was to do, and I loved it because I learned a lot. Even flipped burgers at lunchtime on a Saturday, and um, a lot of fun. But in the mid-80s, um, in the recession, they weren't able to pay. And for, I, I worked for them for about three months with no salary, and then I decided it was time to get another job. Um, so I answered an advertisement in, that Mary B. Kremen had put into the newspaper, for an accounts clerk job in Sandyford. The only reason I went for the job was, it was walking distance from home, <laughs> um, and it was, so it was close by. I had never heard of the company before. And now 30 years later, 29 years later, um, I'm still working for that company, Microsoft, uh, and I've had a phenomenal journey with them over those 29 years. I started in finance, Worked in finance for 10 years. I spent 17 years then in various roles and operations. And then I, in the last two years as managing director for Ireland, I head up the sales and marketing function as well. So a vast set of experiences over those years. I thought when I look back over my career, um, a lot of the learnings that I've had or the key milestones that I thought I would share with you really get triggered by different managers that I've worked for and learnings about my leadership style and what works and what doesn't. And some people in the room may have heard me tell stories before. I used to call them the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, but I decided because it's the personal story tonight that I wouldn't necessarily focus on them and I'd tell you a little bit about focusing on me and what I learned from them. The very first manager I had is one, I'm only going to tell you two or three stories, but the first one is uh, a manager when I start in finance. And he saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. He encouraged me to go back to college and study. He wanted me to get my accountancy qualifications. Now, as I said to you, I was good at school. I wasn't great at school. And I didn't like the idea of five years uh, ahead of me of accountancy exams. So I did a bit of negotiation with him. And all, all through my life, I've had a little bit of negotiations been my, one of my skills. Um, and I negotiated with him that I would do this new course that had come out at the time called Accounting Technician. And that if I did the Accounting Technician exam and I passed them, then I would talk to him about maybe doing the accountancy. So I came 10th in Ireland in both years of my Accountant Technician exam and therefore had no choice but to go and do <laughs> accountancy afterwards. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> But this particular manager, what I really learned, outside of the core basis that accounting has stuck with me, whether I've been in finance, in operations, or in the role I'm in now, understanding business, understanding uh, financials, 
is core to what you, you need for the rest of your career in a leadership role. So he gave me something um, that really did stick with me right the way through my career. But the other thing that he gave me was the, the, the realization that to invest in somebody, invest in an individual, and to see something in them that they don't see in themselves is hugely powerful. And that's coaching. At the time in the 1980s, that word was not a buzzword. Nobody knew what that was. It was, was really good management. Now I realize the power of, the co of coaching. But that, the power of that coaching didn't stick with me that, that early in my career. I just thought he was a, a great guy and I appreciated all the extra work he gave me going to college on weekends and nights to then qualify. Um, fast forward a number of years after that, I did different roles and I look back and I, I had uh, individual contributor roles, manager roles, manager of manager roles. I did local job, I did a regional job, I did global jobs. Um, so my career had really taken off in the first 15 years. It was a really fun place to be, young, dynamic, the business was growing, um, and the average age in the early days was around 1920, so we were having a lot of fun and working really, really hard. So things were going great. I had a great job. Uh, I got married in, over that period of time. I actually met my husband at Microsoft, so that was a, another addition that they've given to me over the years. Um, <laughs> So I got married, moved into a new house. I had a two-year-old daughter. Um, life was wonderful. I was going to the gym to get fit. I thought that was a, a good, good thing to do. And I had a manager who was transitioning role and a new manager coming in. Normal changes that were happening in business. But then a crisis hit. And the crisis was, wasn't, do I can go to Seattle and live over there for Microsoft? 15 years with the company is a time for me to leave and go look for something else to do. Um, the, the crossroads was I, was I found a lump one morning when I got out of the shower. Um, being the forever optimist that I am, I put it down to the muscles <laughs> for, from all of that great workout I was doing in the gym. Um, but it actually turned out two weeks later when I got, went and got it seen to, to be breast cancer. And uh, within 10 days, I'd been in, had surgery, um, and was on the road to recovery. 10 months later, before I actually finished all the chemo and radiotherapy that I had to do um, to get ready to go back to work. During that time, I had gone back to work and to my new, my new boss, which I told you there was a transition, a guy from the US, and asked him, could I come back and do some part-time work? Project here, project there. I didn't really feel sick even though the, the treatment was tough, but I didn't really feel sick, but I'd like to get some project work. And he said, no way. When you, you're either here 150% or you're not here at all. And for me, that was a, a, a big deal. And I've learned, again, about empathy, not sympathy, but empathy for people who go through challenges like this in your li their life. You have to give them the choice to, to do what they need to do to keep them going and keeping them motivated. He didn't do that at the time. Um, but it's something that I've learned and I deal with my teams now. Um, so 10 months later, came back to work to a new manager and you, lo and behold, I had to start from scratch again. He didn't know me. He didn't know my reputation. I had to start uh, building that reputation. And I had a choice to make of what role would I do when I came back. Um, would I leave Microsoft? Would I take a, a more junior role you know, I'd been through a lot. Maybe I should be spending more time with my young daughter, who was just heading to three at the time. Um, but no, no, it's Katrina. I took a global role, um, doing something brand new in Microsoft and heading on, on a plane for the next foreseeable future. I wanted to prove to my new boss, to myself, and probably to everybody that I was better. I was back, I'd beaten cancer, and I did. Um, but I needed a plan B. And what, what if the cancer came back? What if the global role didn't work out? What if this new manager didn't really like me? What was I going to do next? And I thought about what am I really passionate about? What do I love? And it came down to people. Um, started doing some psychometric training, understanding how teams work, but really my passion was coaching. And that's when I decided to go and do the executive coaching course in Ashridge Business College in the UK. Um, 
And as part of that, um, I set up my own business. While I was still working with Microsoft, I went and did some uh, work in Beaumont Hospital, coaching some individuals there. Um, I was really getting on the path to set up this new business if, as my backup plan. But after doing the coaching, I actually didn't need a backup plan. Because what happened was, I learned so much about myself. And I, because you have to be able to really understand yourself before you can go and coach somebody else. That I realized I had more potential. I had more to give. I had more that I could impact in the company. And I learned how to say what I wanted, not what everybody else thought I wanted. I learned how to push back on my manager, push back on the company. I made one failing though, which I, I want to share with you because I think it's a fa failing in a lot of women. Um, the managing director for EOC or the operations center in Ireland was coming up because um, my, my boss at the time, the American guy, was going back to the US. And I didn't even get interviewed for the job. And one of my peers, a colleague, a, male, a man, a guy that the team would know, um, got the job. So I went into my, my boss and I said, why wasn't I interviewed? Why wasn't I considered for the role? And he said, you never asked for it. And I said, but surely you know, it's the top job in operations. I've been in operations at that stage for maybe 14, 15 years. Surely you'd have known I wanted that job. And he said, but you never asked for it. And he said, and your colleague who's getting the job had it on his career plan and was very articulate that he wanted it. Um, so it was a no-brainer for me that he would get the job. So my learning for that, or my learning to everybody when I coach and mentor them today is, you know, as women, we're not very good at telling people what we want. We think because it's in our head, everybody else in the room knows, knows it, but they don't. <laughs> so we need to, to be more assertive. We need to actually say it out loud. And I know there's a fear that it'll actually become real if you say it out loud. Um, but then that might actually lead to something. So I was very clear from then on on my career plan and, and really understanding what I wanted out of, of my future career with Microsoft. Um, and I got the managing director job three years later, uh, which I was very happy about. So uh, two years ago, I took on this, this managing director role. And I have to say, before I took it, there was another crossroads in my life. And I'm nearly done. Let me actually get back to your food. Um, uh, one more crossroads that I came to. I decided I was done with Microsoft. It was time for me to move on. I'd been with the company 27 years. I'd done everything I could do in operations. I'd done everything I could do in uh, finance. So maybe it was time to take a year out and just kind of figure out what I wanted to do. Um, and I handed in my notice to leave. And then I got tapped on the shoulder to say, no, 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 you're not ready to leave yet. There's this other job. And I was going, yeah, but I don't think I'm the right person for that. You know, the economy's been bad in Ireland. We really need, we need somebody who can take um, the business forward and really drive sales and really, you know, ma make a mark. Um, and I don't think that's me. And they said, no, 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 you should. You should do it. Go do it. You know, what's the worst can happen? Um, and I took three months off and then I went back and I, I've done the job. And I have to say, it's been the most phenomenal experience that I've had working with a, a great team of people, very talented um, and really learning every single day. Um, and, I, and my reflection on this job recently came to the, 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 the forefront when I was working with a coach. So we're doing a, a leadership development program and we have some external coaches working with us. And he asked me what I really wanted to work on. And I said, I want to know what my purpose in life is. I've been working a long time and I want to know what my purpose is. Is it to go work for a charity? Is it to give something back to the community? Is it just to go and spend more time with my family? I, and it, it was a real challenge that I know lots of people face. Um, and what I actually came down to understanding after going through that process is, that I'm doing exactly what I was supposed to be doing. My purpose is to lead. My purpose is to lead my team through the transformation the company's going through, to share my experiences like I am tonight with all of you that might just help somebody who's been thinking the same way or been challenged in the same way 
So my realization is my purpose is to lead. Um, and it's been a very powerful realization. And the other piece is that at a point now in Microsoft and here tonight, 30 years in Ireland, we're, and the celebration for that, it's a great recognition to be here tonight and to be able to, to share some of my story with you and to share the excitement and the optimism of the future um, and what the next phase in my career might be. So thank you for listening.